peanuts. Oh, this is a good one. Please don't put your butt on my seats, thank you. There we go, hello and welcome back. It is an extra large coffee day because I have a lot of seeds to look through. Almost all my seed orders have come in. Everything but one order that I only placed a few days ago. It was a little bit of a last minute one that I wasn't planning on doing, but all of the big ones have come in and I ordered from four different places. So we have a really good selection of seeds. Now this box here is my old seeds. It is quite significant. I have quite a few old seeds. So I was very diligent about uh, checking my list when I did my orders this year. I have quite a large list of old seeds which is here. And this is titled New Seeds. These are just ones I picked up in the fall. So they're not quite as new as the ones I have in front of me, but they're a little bit newer than these. I think I have them all in there mixed together actually. But I do like to keep track of what my oldest seeds are because I will try to use those up first. And we're going to look at the Johnny's order first. Taking the elastics off, I think Johnny's was my biggest order. They have a lot of the specialty cut flower varieties that I like to grow some very specific things that I feel at least that I need to have every year. But I got some really interesting vegetable and herb varieties this year too. So in no particular order, the sunflower seeds are popping up first. I bought bigger packets of sunflower seeds. I only got two varieties this year and I have some sunflowers already that will be just for landscape pollinators. These are the cutting varieties. This is Pro Cut Gold Light. DMR means downy mildew resistant. That is always good. Although we don't seem to have much of a problem with that with sunflowers here. And then Pro Cut Horizon. These are typical orange sunflowers, but the Horizon variety, the flowers are supposed to face up a little bit more rather than completely forward. So they're much easier to work into bouquets. And that is key. I do love the gold light though. Next we have Feverfew Virgo, only because that's the only variety that was not sold out. I have quite a few planted outside already that are overwintering. So I have a good selection of Feverfew, but I do always like to try new varieties. So that is Virgo. Feverfew is supposed to be medicinal too. I just use it for bouquet filler and it's really nice in the landscape too. I have some status already. I got Seeker Purple. Let's see if I have any more status in here. That was the only one. So there's a few things that I do use fresh, but I really like to use dried as well. Status is one of them. Gomfrina is another one. I have two packets of Gomfrina here, sometimes called Globe Amaranth. I have QIS Orange, QIS Carmine. QIS, I believe stands for quality in seed. So that is my dried flower pile. Iron pastel mix stock, a really good filler for early spring, smells amazing. Some of these things I would have started by now if we're not leaving on vacation for a week and we are leaving in exactly five hours. So you won't see this video until I get back because I will not be editing while I'm on vacation. Pampas Plume Celosia, a classic. That's gonna go in my dried flower pile as well. I always get a couple of Cosmos, and this year I picked Apricotta and Double Click Bicolor Pink. So, fancy Cosmos. I'm pretty sure I have quite a few in here, actually. What does my list say? My old list says I still have Xanthos Cosmos and Sensation Mix, which are just your typical single pink and purple. Hello, Molly. Don't drink my coffee, no. Please don't walk on my seeds. Zinnias, we're getting to the good stuff. It's all good stuff, but I am going big on zinnias this year. I went much too light on the zinnias the last couple of years, and that was a big mistake. Benary's Giant Mix, Oklahoma Salmon, and Queenie Formula Mix, all pretty different. The Benary's Giants, as the name states, they're giant. They're big, bold, bright colors. I have a lot of those. Well, these are 100 seeds, but I think I already have some. The Oklahoma salmon is slightly smaller blooms, smaller plants, 86% germination. The Benary's giant says 92. I like that with Johnny's. They put the germination rate and the date that they tested it right on the packet. That's really helpful. And then the Queen Lime series, this is Queenie Formula Mix, so it's a mix of a lot of the Queen Lime series. The blooms are smaller and the plants are a little smaller too. 
30 to 40 inches is the same as the Oklahoma salmon, and the Benary's giant is 40 to 50 inches. So we have three more here, white swan marigold, and I bought these mostly for the landscape. It says height is 28 to 36 inches. That's really good for the middle of my ornamental beds, and that's where I'm planning on planting them. Marigolds can be really useful in bouquets. I haven't used them a lot in the past, and I'm not sure if I plan on using them, but treating them as landscape plants means that they won't take up room in my cut flower beds, but they will still be there if I decide to use them later on in the summer. Ooh, didiscus, lacy lavender blue. This is a new one, but I tried to get the pink, but it was sold out. I'd like to try the pink or even the white next year. Uh, minimum 100 seeds, 94% germination. That's good news. And the last one is an aster. Now this past year was terrible, terrible for asters. We got so much rain and asters, they rot fairly easily if they stay too wet. They're pretty prone to mildew and diseases and things like that. So for one or two package of seeds, I really wanted to give that one another try. And that is the Johnny's order. Next place I ordered from was Vessi's, and this is a lot more local. In general, I like to start my seed shopping as local as possible and then slowly work out. That is what I did. I ordered from Annapolis Seeds first. Let's do that one. There, now we are on the east coast of Canada, right in the middle of Nova Scotia, pretty near the capital city of Halifax. I use the term city loosely. But Annapolis Seeds is about 45, 50 minutes away from here. So very local as far as seed companies go. And they actually had a few things on my specialty cut flower list, but there were a few vegetable things that I wanted to try too. And the main one is right on top, peanuts. They've been growing peanuts for almost 15 years now down there. And I've tried them before. It was a moderate success. I did get peanuts but I didn't put a lot of effort into um, paying attention to the growing conditions. So now that I know what to expect, I think I can do a lot better with those this year. It's always good to try something fun and new and peanuts definitely checks that box. For Bascom blataria or moth mullein, this is perennial, biennial it says, sometimes an annual, white flowers. This is um, mostly for the landscape. I may use them as bouquet filler too if they do well. Veronica, Longifolia, another spike flower, violet flower up to three feet tall, a pollinator favorite. Oh, Sweet William. This is a low growing variety, so this one is going to be for the, for the landscape, for my ornamental beds. I do have more Sweet William. Oh, they had lovely varieties of straw flowers here. So I have Dragon Fire, deep dark wine red flowers three to four foot, apricot mix, apricot orange, pink and salmon mix, four feet tall, and moon glow, a range of pearls. Oh, pale, gentle yellows, soft pinks, right. And some rosy ones with a hint of red. Frosted tips, interesting, three to four feet tall. So that's a good variety of straw flowers. Zinnia, another word for pink. I've never seen this anywhere else. This might be something that they've bred themselves. Uh, nice tall variety though. And it's another word for pink. Red flame celosia. This is a coxcomb type. These are a good bright deep red. I really want to dry these to use on my Christmas tree next year. In my head, that seems like it would look amazing. It's barely February and I'm already starting to think about my Christmas tree. More Cosmos, seashells mix Cosmo. Tubular petals, shades of pink and white. This is another four to five foot tall. Now, Annapolis Seeds always sends a bonus pack if you order a certain amount of seeds, which is really nice. This is the same one they sent me last year and I never planted them last year. Mixed Cleome. It says unique showy flowers with long stamens, four to five foot tall annual. Mix of pink, purple, and white. I really should plant those. And then they also had Bupleurum, which is a really good greenery for cut flower bouquets. I almost dropped my Bupleurum. So I got two packs of those. The price was quite good. So now we get to the Vessies. Vessies would be the next local option. And they are in PEI. That's, oh, did I drop one? 
I dropped an Annapolis Seeds packet, Chinese forget-me-nots. I've grown this before. I didn't expect them to have it, so I picked up another pack. I think I have some leftover from last year. If not, I saved quite a bit of seed, so I'll have a bunch of that. Oh, there's some vegetables in this mix. We haven't really seen a lot of that yet. Vessies comes from PEI or Prince Edward Island, which is a very small, that's our smallest province. It's an island. Um, it's not too far from here though. Three and a half hour drive, I think, we can get to PEI. So that's not bad. I consider that local. We have early butternut winter squash. I love winter squash. Butternut is always a favorite. I have a couple squash still left. I have a butter cup, a sweet dumpling, and some delicata. That's definitely my all-time favorite. But I wanted another butternut. And then I got some interesting pumpkin varieties. I got a baby jack mix. This I think was the red, white, and dark. This says white, orange, and striped. I don't think that's what the picture on the website showed. Anyway, you're seeing the pictures already, so we know what they look like. But this is a mix of three different small pumpkins. And I like to do these for our own home decor, but I will sell a whole bunch of these too. Warty Gnome Pumpkins. This one I grew last year and it was fantastic. There are not a lot of seeds in this, but with the miniature pumpkins, you can usually get six to eight per vine if the plants get off to a good start. Pumpkins and squash definitely like the heat, but they also need to be really well watered. Red and white pumpkin mix. Oh, these are the flat pumpkins, right? Good for stacking, very decorative. Cabbage, we don't use a lot of cabbage. Why did I get cabbage seed? I always want to use cabbage. I tried to get some things that would store for over the winter. That's what I did. So I got, oh, this is a small, a mix of small varieties of cabbage and it says the best small winter cabbage, very good for long-term storage. That's why I bought those. Same thing with Brussels sprouts. I bought purple Brussels sprouts one year. I don't feel like I ever planted them. Maybe I did and they failed, but we like Brussels sprouts. They taste so much better when they're fresh. So I like to have some of those. I do have Jade Cross Brussels sprouts already. I don't know how many seeds. So I have two of those, two varieties of Brussels sprouts. Ooh, some herbs. I knew I bought those somewhere. German chamomile, great for tea. Good for filling out perennial borders too. It's a good for taking up space. And I sometimes make herbal flower bouquets too. Shouldn't call them flower bouquets. I make herbal bouquets and I like to use some flowering things that are also edible. And chamomile is a good one for that. I have two varieties of parsley. Peony, I think is a giant Italian flat leaf parsley, and then I have forest green parsley, which is a curly parsley. I tend to prefer the curly. If I were to put parsley in like an edible bouquet, an herbal bouquet, the flat leaf parsley would uh, sell a little bit better. I have some basil, lemon basil. The aroma on that is amazing. I sometimes use it as bouquet filler, but we eat a lot of it also. Prospera basil, this is just a Genovese type high resistance to downy mildew. So this is for the kitchen garden. Oh, some flowers. Okay, bachelor's buttons. Do I remember this right that this is technically an edible flower? I think so. Don't quote me on that, but I think it might be. So these could be added into my herbal bouquets as well. I have lupins. I have grown some lupins from seed. I have half a dozen plants outside and they are really good for bouquets. So I wanted a lot more. They've grown hard too. I have them in terrible soil out there. I never pay any attention to them. They always look so sad at the end of the season, but they always bloom so nicely in the spring. So, and Coreopsis, early sunrise, which I think is a small double flowered orange. This is just, I don't think it's very tall, 24 to 26 inches. This is more for the perennial ornamental beds. So that's Vessies. I'm making a pretty significant mess down here. That's part of the fun. Oh, need to switch legs. And is this the last one? Oh, this is a good one. So we've done Johnny's, Annapolis seeds, Vessies. And I did place a seed order in the fall. Someone was having a sale. I wish I could remember who. I have them right here though. Where did I get cardinal basil from? 
Oh, Stems Flower Farm. I'm pretty sure this is Ontario. Molly, hi. What? Molly, it requires attention. What else is new? Please don't put your butt on my seeds. Thank you. All right, let's add this one in because this is pretty local also. Stems Flower Farm, Ontario. Although I have to say, because we're way out on the East Coast, I'm pretty sure Johnny's, which is in Maine, is closer than Ontario, which is the middle of Canada. So I'm going to grab a few things that I picked up from Stems Flower Farm. Cardinal Basil. This one looks gorgeous. It almost looks like a celosia. I forget if it's also edible, but I'm just going to use this one as decorative. I'm going to try it out for bouquet filler. It looks just gorgeous. I have a flowering cabbage. Oh, I forgot about that one. That is for fall. Foxglove Apricot Beauty. Godetia. I grew some of this last year. It looked really nice. This one is Sybil. Uh, Salvia Victoria Blue. I've never grown this from seed, but I have grown it from transplants. Uh, soapwort, beauty white, saponaria. Oh, I feel like I tried to buy that from somewhere else and it was sold out. This is why you look at your list. Rat tail status. That one looks super cool. It's definitely different from your typical status. Buttercream stock, so another stock. Sweet William messenger mix. Oh, I have three varieties of sweet William. I have messenger mix, sweet no, not sweet, super duplex mix and Newport pink. So these are your taller cutting varieties of Sweet Williams. So that is Stems Flower Farm. Now we get to Whistling Prairie. And I said this is the good one because I have ranunculus in here. Now I have about 400 corms of ranunculus downstairs already. I could not resist picking up a couple extra varieties. There's only 10 in here. In each of these, I have two. I have cream and ranunculus rose. I have a lot of different varieties of ranunculus now. There are seeds in here too. I love these companies that put a lot of effort into their packaging. Thank you so much for your order. It's just a thank you postcard, but it's lovely. I really like those little touches. Now, Whistling Prairie has gorgeous seed packages too. Look at that. All slightly different color. Ooh, I forgot what I ordered here. Larkspur, smoky eyes. I had enough Larkspur. I did not need more. I bought more anyway. Smoky eyes. When you're already ordering and there's a flat rate shipping, why not toss a couple extra in, right? Phlox. I was not going to grow Phlox for cut flowers. Not the annual version anyway. I bought that anyway. Sugar Stars. It's a lovely variety. Some more Snapdragons. Costa Apricot. I also have a lot of Snapdragons. Clearly I needed more. Costa Silver. I'm pretty sure Costa is the one that you're supposed to start a bit earlier too. So, and these are both nice and tall, 30 to 36. I did not pay attention to height when I bought my Snapdragons last year and most of the ones I planted in my first succession to bloom early were short varieties. So that was a big fail. So I did not have Snapdragons in my spring bouquets last year. Sweet peas. These are definitely not for bouquets. Sweet peas are beautiful flowers. They have a really nice scent. I will cut them and bring them in the house. Sometimes people want little bunches of them, but these are mostly for me. I have Sir Jimmy Shand and Carlotta. More zinnias. I have three packages of zinnias. I also have about eight. That's a guess. It could be more. I have a lot of zinnias in my old seed packet too. This is Benary's Giant Carmine. I do like that color and you never know what you're going to get in a mix. So I did want a little bit of some specific varieties. Queen Lime Orange. I have a Queenie Lime Mix. I have a Queen Lime Orange there. And Isabellina Creamy Yellow. This one was new. I think these ones are smaller. Still says 30 to 40 inches tall. I have a really good selection of zinnias this year. I just need to make sure I can fit them all in. And that's it. That is my seed haul for 2024. And this was a long time coming too, because I did not do a lot of seed shopping last year. I did not do a big Johnny's order like I did the year before. Well, some of your seed packets may have dates on them. If they're a year or two or even five years old, don't throw them away. You can always try them. I've had tomato seeds that I've been growing for six or seven years and they still get really high germination rate. Now some seeds, I think straw flowers are one, 
onions, yes, I think so. Ten, the germination rate tends to go down after the first year. Parsnips is another one for sure. But for most seeds that tend to still be viable, you know, a couple of years after you buy them, you can also help yourself out by making sure that they are very dry. You know, when you buy clothing or something, you order something online and you almost always have that little desiccant package. Whenever I get one, I toss it into my seed box. And you can see here that my seeds are star stored in cardboard. This is not the best practice, but in the winter, our air is really, really dry. And this usually lives up on the shelf in the basement. The basement is six to seven degrees cooler than it is up here. And it's very dry down there. So that is perfect for seeds. You do not have to put them in the freezer. You do not have to put them in the fridge. And if you do, make sure you take the humidity into consideration because first most important thing is to keep your seeds dry and then bring the temperature down and keep them cool. Some seeds will be killed if you put them in the freezer if their moisture content is too high. And that doesn't mean noticeably damp. They can still have too much relative humidity to go in the freezer because that little bit of moisture in those cells can expand and burst. So if your seeds are dry enough, they can go in the freezer. And that's some information you can find online. So with that, I have to put all these seeds away, reheat my coffee, and we are leaving on vacation. We are getting on a plane tomorrow and heading down to Florida for a week. So I will be back by the time you see this. So I hope you are all having a fantastic winter where you are. And the minute I get back, we are jumping headfirst into seed starting. So I cannot wait for that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you then.